In this video, let's see a proof question based on the adjoint of a matrix. We already know what is a matrix, how to calculate the adjoint and also we know what do you mean by singular and non-singular matrix. In this video, we are going to see a proof question based on the adjoint. Let's see what the question has to say and let's get started with the solution. The question is for any non-singular matrix. Now, with the help of the previous video, you know that a non-singular matrix means the one whose determinant value is not 0. And the matrix name is A. It is given that the order of the matrix is N. You have to prove determinant of adjoint A is equal to determinant of A to the power N minus 1. The power is N minus 1 as a whole. Now let's see the proof of this question. The proof is very simple if you know the previous video's properties that you studied. Now we know that A into a joint A is equal to determinant of A into I and that is equal to a joint A into A. This we already know from the previous videos. We have also seen a video based on the example 2. That is the numerical question 2. And i can be written as i n also if you have any confusion regarding the order. Now let's take this classification a into a joint a is equal to determinant a into i. I know that a into a joint a is equal to what? Outside it is determinant of a and inside it is the identity matrix. And that identity matrix had been a two order matrix it would have been 1 0 0 1. Had it been a 3 ordered, it would have been 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1. But in this case, when you already have a matrix, which is a n ordered matrix, to show it in the form of a matrix is a bit confusing and difficult, but still it will be what? It will be 1 here and then it will be zeros everywhere. Then it will be 0 here, it will be 1 here, then so on zeros. I write here 0 first of all, then what will happen is it will be 0, 0, 1 here, then again it will be zeros and so on. And last but not the least, when it goes like that to the last row, last column, the story is what? It will all be zeros, last element would be 1 and that is the case with the n by n matrix. Now these dotted lines means what? That the series is continuing. This is happening as it is. There also the series is continuing. It is similar to that matrix 1 0 0 1 for a case of 2 by 2 matrix or 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 for a 3 by 3 matrix. Now A into a joint A is equal to determinant A into something called as this and if that debt A has to be multiplied with the matrix you know that in any matrix if I have k as a constant or a scalar multiplied with a matrix it goes to every element it goes to every element so that means if this del a behaves as a constant since it is non-singular so it is not zero so it will not make everything zero it will make something as a value so the answer will be what 1 into del a is del a 0 into del a is 0 0 into del A is 0 and so on. So it will be zeros throughout. Next what you have is in the next row the story changes to del A into 0 is 0. Del A into 1 is del A. So it is 0 then del A and then again zeros followed. Similarly 0, 0, del A, 0, 0 and so on. And this also happens in all the rows and the columns and the last row, last column, what will be there? Let's see. Del A into 0 is 0, del A into 0 is 0, del A into 0 is 0. Everywhere it is 0 till this last. This last is what? 1, 1 into del A is del A. So I have the last row as 0, 0, 0, 0 and the last you have is del A. That is what I need to say. Now. This is the case for a n by n ordered matrix. We started with A into a joint A and we are getting something in the form of matrix. But what do we need to prove? Do we need to prove in the form of matrix? No, but determinants. You see we have determinants both the sides. So we need to take the determinant. If you take the determinant, what will happen? This will be determinant. 
Here also it has to be determinant. So let's make it a determinant. You take a determinant, it becomes a determinant. Now not a matrix. What change occurs? The change that occurs is now del A can be taken out as common since it is a determinant. So here also some changes occur. I know the property that del A into B is always equal to del A into del B. So if I use this property for here, I can separate it as del A into del adjoint A. Determinants can be separated in case of multiplication. Determinants can be separated in case of multiplication. Here what happens? It is a n by n ordered matrix. Take out determinant of A common. Taking common from the first row. Taking common from the second row. Taking common till it from the last row. What you have? You have taken out n determinants common. n times. First time from the first row. Second time from the second row and so on till the last row. You can take n determinants common. Inside is what? Inside will be 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0 and till the last 0, 0, 0, 1. That, will, that means inside will be the identity matrix. Right? Now identity matrix is nothing but which behaves as a 1 in mathematics. So even if you write 2 into 1, then also it's 2. If you write simply 2, then also it's 2. So you can always disappear this identity matrix. Let's just disappear it. Now, this is del A multiplied by n times. This is del A multiplied by 1 times. So what happens? I can write it as del A into del adjoint A. Here I can write it as del A multiplied by del A to the power n minus 1. Because when bases are same, the powers are added. If this is power 1, this is power n minus 1. In case of multiplication, 1 gets cancelled with minus 1. You always get n minus 1. I repeat it again. Suppose I have 2 raised to the power 5. That can always be written as 2 raised to the power 4 into 2 raised to the power 1. Why? Because these powers are always added up. So the same case happens. If you have power n, you can always write it as 1. You can always write it as 1 multiplied by n minus 1. If n is 5, n minus 1 is 4. That is what I am explaining. Right? Now you can cancel del A. You can cancel del A. You are left with del adjoint A is equal to del A power n minus 1. Which is what you needed to prove. I write it again. And hence, in this video, we proved a very important property which can come in the form of a question which is del adjoint A is equal to del A to the power n minus 1.